In this video, we're going to go through the tutorial Take Off Trench Network Quantities. You can follow along by going to Carlson Help and going to the tutorial is all written out step by step. The file you'd want to use is under File Open under Carlson Projects. It will be either called Demo 3 or Take Off Demo 2. So we're going to be looking at getting cut quantities for putting in our trench, backfill quantities, and also linear footage of pipe. This can be done with the trench module of Carlson or included in Carlson Takeoff. We're going to be working down the trench pull down here. And we're going to start at the top and end at the bottom here. So let's do input trench line. We have a polyline that represents our trench. We have uh, an invert in, so we're going to get prompted for that. Prompt for pipe wall thickness. I can determine the thickness of the pipe wall, so that, that will be taken out from my backfill quantities. Uh, I'm going to just default that as an inch, and we're going to call the structure width a default of four feet wide and I'm going to say OK to the rest of the defaults here. So now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to pick the trench line that I have here. It's going to prompt me for stationing. I'm just going to leave the, the default of zero, but I could use stationing if I wanted to. I'm going to select the manhole ID, DCB368. I can just pick right on that text. The invert in, I'm going to leave the same as the invert out. And now prompts me for the invert out. I'm going to pick that. And you can see it's reading that elevation 174. And then select the rim elevation 178.75. And I can see it's read that value. Okay, now it's it's jumped to the next point on that polyline for that next structure. And you can see it's gone 200 feet. So same thing, I'm going to pick on the manhole ID, the invert in, the invert out, and then the rim elevation. Okay, now that I've picked both of those, it's saying between these two structures, what is the pipe size? And it's labeled right here for me, 15 inches. Now it jumps to the next structure. I have just been picking on the text, but I can also manually enter this in. In case what's shown on the screen isn't actually AutoCAD text, I can type in CB347. I can hit E for enter, and the invert in here is 170.54. And the invert out is 166.1. Enter. And finally, the rim elevation, I'm going to hit E for enter again and put 176.50. Okay, the pipe size between these two structures is also 15 inches. Okay, now it prompts me to put in another trench line. Let's go down here. I have one more structure on this job. I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to pick on this polyline. And the stationing, again, I'm just going to default zero. The manhole ID is CB349. The invert, since it's the first one, the invert in and the invert out is going to be the same, 178.3. And then the rim elevation is 187.8. Okay, now it prompts me for the manhole ID for this structure that it's going into, and it's the same 347. Okay, and the pipe size between these two structures is 24 inches. Enter in another trench line, I can do N for no. 
Okay, and, it, and I can see it's written out these values onto the screen for me. To change those, I can go to Trench, Plan View, Label Settings, and I can say, you know what, I want to see the depth of my structures, the invert ins, the invert outs, and let's put the depth at the bottom here. I have options here to change the pipe labeling. Let's say OK to the defaults. OK, so now I have the depth being shown, the invert out, and I can see the linear footage and the pipe size. 15 over here I have 24 inch and I can see that distance between the structures so the program now knows the depths of my structures and it knows horizontally where things are going what I still need to define is a cross section of the trench so if I go to trench I want to next go to input edit trench template if I run this command, I'm creating a new trench. I'm going to call it trench 15 inch and say open. Bottom offset, that's from the bottom of the pipe to the bottom of the trench. I'm going to say that's half a foot. The trench width, I'm going to say is two feet, but I'm going to have it change. Here's add pipe diameter to trench width. So by having this at two feet, that's basically I have a foot on each side of my pipe plus the pipe diameter. So when it's when the trench is in 15 inch, it's uh, 15 inches plus two feet. And then when it's 24, it's going to add uh, the that pipe size to the the trench width here of two feet. So as my pipe gets larger, my trench gets wider as well. This is a vertical side height, a minimum vertical side height before I do any sloping. I can put in benches as well, um, up to four different benches if I like. And then I can define my, my backfill. I'm going to call this bedding one. And I'm going to say it's a foot. And then I'm going to put. Uh, bedding two and put that to two feet. So I've defined some backfills. It's going to be cut out from the pipe here. So my backfill quantity will not include the pipe size. And I've defined my trench to get wider as my pipe gets wider. So I'm going to say save to this and exit. And really, we've done everything. I can get uh, some trench quantities now. If I go to trench and trench network quantities, you can see I have the option here to calculate all the trench lines or, or them individually. I'm going to have it report me the backfill volumes. I'm interested in that. I'm going to say uh, my template. I'm going to load that one we just created for a cross section of my trench S target surface so if I'm using takeoff or construction or site net I can use um, the site net that's in the civil package I can use those models to calculate my trench quantities we haven't done that in this example so I'm just going to do rim elevations okay and then I'm going to I'm going to report these other things Okay, draw plan view zone map. Let's go to the setup for that. And what this is going to do is it's going to draw in the map how deep my pipe is. So I have that set up. If I go to my depth zones, okay, I have a default in here of two between zero and two, two and six feet deep, six and ten, and anything over ten. So my linear footage of pipe is going to be broken down by how deep it is and you can do up to 10 zones and they're completely up to you to define 
draw a trench in 3D. If I go to the setup for this, I'm going to give it a layer name uh, trench 3D. This is going to write out my trench as 3D line work. Okay, and let's say okay and look at the report. So looking at my report, I can see the two runs I have. I can see the length of those and their average depth. I can see the dimensions of the trench that I've created and that I'm getting my quantities off the rim elevations provided. So I have my total cut for putting in the trench and then I can see my backfill. I can see that it's less because I have the pipe that's going in there. Of my backfill, I see quantities of bedding one and bedding two, and then the other fill that's necessary to fill in the trench. The depth zones I have reported out, I can see most my pipe is between, most of my trench is between two and six feet deep. I have uh, 100 feet that's between 6 and 4 but nothing is uh, 6 and 10 excuse me but nothing is over 10 feet deep about 20 percent of this job is between 6 and 10 feet deep here's those uh, depths I can see where those depths are in terms of their stationing uh, in the plan view and then I have it broken down by pipe size so my 15 and 24 inch, I could see how much 15 inch pipe I have, how much 24 inch pipe. And looking down further, I can see the depths of all my structures. This is a report that's text, so I can type right into it. I can save this report, I can print it out, or I could put it to the screen. Let's say screen here. And you say OK and put that out on the screen. So I have my report right here. I have a depth zone map. And if we look, I can see the different colors on here represent how deep the trench is. And you can see the line work that's been drawn as well. And this is an actual 3D faces uh, for a trench. I can look at this in 3D, 3D viewer window. I'm going to select these objects. Press enter. I'm going to make this take up the whole screen here. I'm going to turn off uh, the ignore zero elevations, get rid of that text. And let's spin this around and look at this pipe in 3D. So I have both the pipe and the trench being shown as 3D faces. Now you could use this for modeling or just viewing and looking at conflicts.